everybody so we have a 2019 Honda Odyssey this is the EXL um, I'm gonna do a review on the installation of roof rails Let's see there aren't any currently we have the aftermarket bright line roof rails got these off of Amazon uh, this is the kit that includes the roof rails as well as the cro crossbars, so it's all included in a single package. Uh, I'm going to start by unboxing these and see what we got. Okay, so we got two boxes. The smaller box contains the crossbars and hardware. Looks like we do have some instructions in there. We will get into that soon, but first... In the larger box, uh, we have actual rails themselves. And a second box in here. Uh, let's see what we got there. Second box includes some of the additional hardware necessary to do the installation, and we'll break it all out and take a look. Okay, I've got this set. This is the rail set, just the rails, not the crossbars, but I've unpackaged everything and laid it out. I uh, was a little bit surprised at the number of parts here. But nonetheless, uh, one thing to be mindful of is all those plastic parts come in these bags. Um, you see these white clips. Some of those were free, loose in the bags. Uh, easy to not notice since the bags white they're white just pay attention to that make sure you get all your parts out of those bags uh, did come with this hardware actually just to note this had this tool in it this bag and the instructions in it uh, all of the hardware was in yet another bag I cut that open and just dumped into this resealable baggie this is the instruction and it has a list here of additional tools that you'll need so looking at this tools required uh, at the end of this I did not use a Phillips screwdriver I used a putty knife but it's you need a plastic one fairly small something fairly small I actually used one of my trim tools didn't use a ratchet I did use needle nose pliers uh, painters tape for that I did not use a torque wrench I did not use a ruler I did use a tape measure felt tip pen uh, did not use the file this T15 and T30 Torx is part of that screwdriver kit that they give you um, and yeah that's it so uh, half of these tools you don't actually need um, I do have this it recommends this. Uh, this is a trim tool kit. I got that on Amazon. Uh, I just happen to have it for other parts. And it recommended an air tool. I'm going with a an air saw, I think it said in the instructions. I'm going with this oscillating tool. And some additional parts. Uh, We'll get started here, running through the instructions in a second. Okay, so step one, interesting already, uh, says to separate the pre-installed mountings. Um, you can see the image there. Uh, looks like mine are already separated. No, I think it looks like it's this piece, this piece, uh, a couple of those pieces combined, uh, already separated, so that's done moving on to step two okay so step two is a little tricky I've noticed here first off things aren't very well labeled in the instructions so a couple things to note here uh, you should be able to see that right each of the rails is marked RH and LH right hand and left hand these parts also left hand uh, you can see in here upside down there left hand um, these it tells us that we want to assemble this part with the rail on each end it only shows one end being done 
note that you got to put uh, this plastic trim piece on the rail first and then the end piece and then it'll snap together uh, doesn't say to snap it together and eh, interesting but um, I noticed it doesn't tell you which one goes on which end but this piece will only fit in the correct end because of that angle so that makes it easier to attach and what I did was I took these pieces here uh, if you fit this over you can see I didn't snap it together but you can see that this one easily fits this guy and this one's got a different cut and it fits this other side so fit those together first make sure you keep them together I'm just working with the left-handed side left-handed rail right now I'm gonna drop these on and then we will have this the image from step two where we've got the ends on each of the rails is the idea and we'll move on to three okay another quick note on step two the instructions simply say two half round head hexagon screw uh, so I'm pretty sure we're talking about this one uh, it's got this hex head on it I'm pretty sure because there are two holes in each end of each rail so eight screws and look eight, they give you eight screws uh, the other options don't have eight screws so that's where we're going with it does give you specifics in how tight to make it uh, I don't have a way to measure that I do have a torque wrench but it's uh, much larger than what they're saying here so 8.9 foot-pounds mm, as tight as I can make it with my hand okay still on step two here just something else to note this is the tool that came with it these are the screws these things are real easy so it said to that was uh, it said to torque it uh, 8.9 foot-pounds again I don't have a wrench that will really measure that I guess I kind of do but nonetheless uh, I didn't mess with it you just you got to be careful with this you can actually see that it's real easy to over tighten these and then if you do this will strip out uh, so just watch that don't over tighten them and you should be fine okay so step three is about marking the car the uh, trim piece that's on the top of the car we're gonna have to pull that off so neat idea put tape on the trim piece put tape on the car and line it up with the line uh, it gives you some measurements here you can see they're all in millimeters with the inch um, corresponding value uh, I went with 27 and a half and 43 and 3 eighths to get about 43 and a third roughly uh, you can see here just jumping up on top my markings I did also mark them with left rear and left front uh, also of note so from the front of the vehicle it says to mark at 43 and again 3 eighths notice there's two gaps here this is a hard plastic piece and this is the soft plastic piece I went from this rear most gap hope that's right not sure we'll find out this piece and it wanted me to leave that on when I do my measurements I took it off and did the measurements without it it wasn't very clear to say one way or the other Here's the picture, and you can kind of see, I don't know, there's a line there. Uh, I guess that meant, leave that there. Alright, listen, oop, wind. So looking here at step five, it says here specifically seven molding clips. Uh, show some pictures here. There are not seven, there are five molding clips on mine. Mine's a 2019. Uh, I would assume it's the same for all of the series of vans in the uh, the various years in the same model line um, that there's not actually seven there's five uh, this messed me up on the first side 
um, because I went looking for the seven, the extra two, and there's um, stink bug. Uh, there's two end caps. I'll show you these on this rail to so see this extra piece. This is on the front. There's a smaller piece on the back at the other end. Uh, and they do detach, but you don't need to detach them. Uh, I did on the first side, thinking that that was uh, number six clip and number seven, since the English isn't great in these instructions. I just kind of assumed that that was what it was talking about. And you can kind of see the picture of this end cap. Don't take the end caps off. You need them on there for the next uh, step seven when you do the measurements. Uh, and there's only five clips. Don't go looking for six and seven. All right, so step six is about removing some of this excess sealant around the bolts where you're going to attach this. Um, it shows us here. I didn't realize it till the second time. But there's only three spots that you need to remove this. Let me show you this. So here's the far rear. Don't need to mess with those. Here's the ones in front of the far rear. You clean, you can see I cleaned those up. Uh, the middle ones I cleaned up. And then in the front, uh, not the very front, you leave that alone, but the ones behind the very front, you, you wanna clean those up. You can see this rail on the other side. The three points where uh, the rail is actually connecting, that's what we're cleaning so, up. I did. I used a plastic tool. It says use a putty knife. Usually those are metal. Wouldn't do that. Um, I did notice it still seems to expose this gray. Hoping that's plastic so it doesn't rust in the future. But I did that along these. It didn't seem to be much of a problem. Uh, mostly in the back. Okay, so the next step, this is where it gets a little sketchy, a little scary. Uh, this is where we're marking uh, this guy so that we can cut it. You can kind of see that felt tip mark I put there. Here's one here. Uh, you can see. And we did those along the way. Again, it's a little tricky because the measurements are... Um, oops, I'm on the wrong page. Here it is. The measurements are millimeters, and you get these kind of random inch markings. Uh, estimate a little bit. I did notice, so like this is one of the center pieces that's going to go on, and I don't know if you can see these, see those markings I have for it. So this ends up being larger than the actual cut, so I think there's some wiggle room uh, in terms of being precise so uh, when it's done we're gonna end up removing a bunch of these sections that's where the mount points will be for the rails and we will uh, piece it back together uh, this is what I'm using to cut it again so this is we're on to step 8 it talks about using an air saw I'm using an oscillating saw with the metal blade and that'll that'll do it Okay, I've cut it. So here it is. I left it in order um, as I went along. Basically, all of these short pieces are going to come out. And again, they will be what's removed. Those will be the contact points for the rails that we will get installed. So. Uh, again, keep it in order so that we can reassemble what's left fairly easily. All right, so we're on step nine. Uh, choose this black clip. Uh, what we're going for is, see that opening here is going to slide over top of that. So just like that, so I could get it to snap into place. camera while you're doing this I just kind of broke that clip over bend it over but anyway that's going to slide right on top of that uh, and then this hole will line up with the front mounting piece 
Now, on this rearmost piece, it says to snap this on, and then this spacer comes with your rail kit. That's in the bag, and just slide that in. And it mentions here. Okay. It says. Uh, make sure to stall in the correct direction. I'm assuming that means one, make sure it's in the right piece. This is the rearmost piece of my section. And two, to make sure that these double grooves are sticking uh, up out of the bottom. Okay, so if you've made your cuts right and fitted everything back in, you're left with these gaps. See where these line up the gap so the gaps are where all of our supports will end up going that's the front the middle and the rear and you just see these two bolts sticking up and that's where we're going to attach the brackets okay so i've put this on uh pretty disappointed with the labeling of these the, there's nothing on this that says it's left hand versus right hand. There is a difference between them. Let me show you that real quick with the other one. You can see one's a round hole, one's a oblong hole, a little oval shape. Um, I went with the idea that the circular hole is in the front. So this is the right hand side. I went with the other one for the left hand side. Not sure if that's right or not, but that's what I've gone with and might have to correct along the way here. Next step is putting the rail on. This is the right rail. I've already set the left one up there, but uh, these rubbery pieces. So I did go ahead and snap this plastic piece down. I uh, wasn't sure about that at the very beginning these rubbery pieces will fit over and then actually this is the wrong one they will snap into place so they can't put them on the wrong side because these holes it's actually a snap line up with this hole and this hole so they will only line up in the right way but you're gonna go ahead put those on snap them in place do that on both sides. Uh, this way. Snap that in place. And they just get they just hold in. And that's what's gonna create a little bit of a seal. So let me show you. I've got this up here. Um haven't bolted it down yet. But there's this rail will sit in the middle on that and then on the back um, you can see these holes line up this one was a little tight I had to work it so we're gonna try to secure the bolts on now okay so I've got the bolts in you drop on there be careful with those you want to make sure that they're going on pretty easy uh, it's easy to potentially strip something if it doesn't line up right. These again are the like 8.9 foot pounds, so not a lot. I made sure all four were on before I'm tightening them down. So I'm going to tighten these down and we'll move on to the next step. So I've got the rail on, everything's tightened. Uh, the next step is these bolts go in the back of this secure the middle uh, it's looking pretty good All right, so I've just tightened down these bolts back here um, they're a little tricky because they're in the inside of the vehicle on the inside they're hard to get to uh, the tool that they gave you works but you gotta a little bit at a time so tightened while I'm up here I took the tape off painters tape off and it's looking pretty good and the final steps are put these two plugs on that center rail the center support there over the two screws that we just did and then we're going to install 
these end caps. Let's see how this goes. These, these rubberized caps are a little tricky. They're tough to get in place, but keep working at it and they'll pop in. And now for these. Uh, it looks like this hole will go on the inside. There's that, and the hole on the back. I'm gonna line this tab in first and snap it in place. And we have a roof rail installed. That one's done. Took a little longer than I expected. It's probably been about two hours, but that's it. I'm also trying to do the video, so a little bit of added time for that. Plus, we cut these wrong. Um, let that be a lesson learned for me. And... Uh, an error avoided for you so use this to know otherwise I think it looks good and we'll work on the next one there's one other quick step that I neglected to mention there's these screws in the kit on the back and the front of the rail you'll see this hole uh, it's on the inside that helps to just secure this plastic cover piece that we snapped on it'll screw in there and lock it in place, use this tool to do it. Okay, so I now have my rails installed. Uh, looks pretty good. I feel like it looks like uh, I'm seeing a little bit, you kind of see here the little rubber gasket isn't quite sealed, but I'm guessing a little bit of heat and time will take care of that and it'll flex and get into place. This front one looks a little better, but you can kind of see the front grooves leaves it open there for some drainage as well. So it looks good. Um, just one thing to note, uh, when you do this, you're going to be leaning against the car a lot. So don't watch what you're wearing, uh, belt buckle. Or anything like that as you're leaning stepping up on the stool and leaning against the car you don't want to scratch the paint so watch that uh, at least have a shirt that extends over your belt buckle if you got one on uh, and then anything else any buttons or snaps or stuff you want to watch those okay next we're gonna you can see on this far side you can see the screws over here there's some right under here as well that's where our crossbars, we're gonna unbox that and do those next. Okay, so here are the crossbars unboxed. Uh, again, uh, just with the rails, I've flattened out the box, use that as my workspace so nothing gets scratched during the driveway. A um, Couple things I noticed, um, the rails nicely are labeled so you know which side faces front. On the underside, it tells you it's the rear. Uh, same thing, this one, and it's the front, so that's good. Uh, on these clamps, you can see the R, R, L, L. Uh, it also it does have this on the driver side, not on the passenger side. Um, I did notice, I don't see anything that specifically says that this is the front versus the rear, just that this is the driver's side. Maybe it doesn't matter, I don't know. Looking at these, they look to be pretty identical. So, maybe it doesn't matter. Um, we got a bag of hardware. It came with it, Allen wrench, and our instructions. So we're gonna give this a shot. Okay, so step one is just simply 
attaching these attaching these uh, end pieces to the crossbars um, again they're clearly labeled R's and L's so I started this is the front piece uh, and I put the left on it tells you to tighten the left nice and tight you'll notice on this bracket let me show you on this one two screw two holes for the screws we're using these short screws here not the longer ones there's only two options easy enough um, and it says tighten it down so I did and then on this side I'll show you this bracket instead of two holes you just have one long slot and it says keep this loose so you can see that I can still adjust it so I'm assuming we're gonna put it up there adjust this to account for the uh, minor differences in length on the rails and then we'll attach it and tighten it. I did get it as tight as possible that this could still move uh, just so that because I'm assuming we're going to be working in this small gap to tighten these up once it's on the roof so I don't want to have to tighten it any more than I need to um, so I got to tighten down as much as possible while it's I got good access and then I'll just tighten it up once it's on okay so now I need to remove these screws on the this is on the rails so this is the rear rail there's some over there and get those out so that we can mount this crossbar in so here you can see so those are out here's the clips they're just little plastic clips that fill in there you can actually take them out with your hand um, just unscrew them they were they're just minorly threaded as you can see they're just loose in here uh, and they come right out once you get them turning so take those out I, uh, again I've started with the rear so I got those out and now we're going to bring the crossbar up here and there it is here. Throw this down. So what we need is we actually want to be on the passenger side of the vehicle. I'm going to grab my stool. I'm going to be on the passenger side because when we put these end pieces on here, this side's tight and this side will slide and adjust. So we're going to put this across. So we're going to fit it in and then we're going to slide this piece on this end out to it fits. I'm going to use two hands, so I'm going to pause it. We're going to make it fit, and then we're going to tighten it down. So For that step, it's definitely good to have, again, this is the right side, uh, a little tension on these so that you can slide it out, and it'll stay put. So, right, we're fitting it up in place, slide this out till it fits, and then we take it back off. We're going to tighten this down. we got to do that separate because we got to pop that cover piece on. And once we do that, we won't have access to these screws. So we got to fit it, tighten it, pop the cover on, and then we'll actually mount it. Uh, just to note while you're doing that, double check that guy. Make sure it is when you have it fitted in place, it is in the right direction. So actually installing these. Um, there it is. I uh, did that side. I didn't tighten it. You can actually see here the bolts. I put them in. You want to make sure they slide in nice and easy. Um, you have to hold the rail up a little bit while you while you put them in there. Now you can kind of see the alignment in here. Uh, this one's a little loose. It could have been a little tighter, but the screws will definitely pull that tight, so not worried about that. And they should slide in nice and easy thread in nice and easy uh, if they're lined up right don't force it 
and I didn't tighten the other side didn't tighten the other side I just started it and get this side started and then we'll tighten it up okay so I've got these installed cross bars are in front and back rails are in everything is good uh, tightened up nicely um, curious to see how these do over time uh, one thing I didn't note and thought about but kind of after the fact uh, no kinds of Loctite or anything on these screws so they may need to be tightened down a little bit as we go from just vehicle vibration something for me to check later on uh, they look good overall aesthetically pretty happy with them just stepping back and looking at the vehicle not bad right um, not sure you'd notice that they're aftermarket versus Honda uh, I didn't note the Honda ones were probably about $70 more than these if I got the whole set uh, but every place that I looked at the shipping was pretty ridiculous for the Honda ones these came right from Amazon and Prime members so and no shipping fees uh, so that saved a ton I'm happy with the way they look got an upcoming trip where we'll put a turtle top on here so eager to see how that goes but um, just here no remaining parts for the crossbars for the rails themselves they came these are the clips that came off that you don't necessarily put back on some of them you do but it also came with a few of those clips I didn't use them I just reused the ones that were there so that's the only remaining parts and then these tools this came with the rails this came with the crossbars uh, everything else has gone the stuff in here is this is just the trim pieces that I cut off before putting the rails on so happy with the way it looks uh, only tricky part was cutting those trim pieces making sure that we leave leave this front piece installed when you measure You're measuring from here not from here so that was a little tricky on this side but we got it straightened out and I fixed it I did not do that mistake on this side on the passenger side but it looks good uh, so if you're considering them yep uh, hopefully this video helps you with the installation process uh, hope you learn something from it or avoid a mistake from this video uh, but I would do it again if I if I had the option to redo the choice I'd still stick with the aftermarket from Brightline all right take care